some stocks, they just can't catch a break in this market. Last night, we got results from Columbia Sportswear. That's the house of apparel brands you know as Columbia, Sorrel, Mountain Hardware, Prana, among other things. Now, the company reported a fabulous beat and raised a good guidance here. 20 cent earnings beat off $1.55 basis. Higher than expected sales up 14% year over year. Even better, management raised their full year forecast. Yet the stock fell nearly $3 or 3.15% today. Why? Well, in part, it's because maybe the company only raised its guidance by five cents a share, which is pretty conservative given that they just delivered a 20 cent beat. But perhaps also because some anonymous Chinese officials told Bloomberg that they're doubtful about the prospect of reaching a trade deal. Columbia Sportswear is widely perceived as having too much China exposure, both as part of its supply chain and as an end market. This is something that's been holding the stock back all year, even though the company supported three straight beat and raised quarters in a row. I think it's nuts. When Columbia peaked at 109 back in February, Wall Street only expected them to earn $4.08 per share. Uh, now that the company's gotten for 470 or 480 and the stock has pulled back to 90 sooner or later, I think the market's going to give this thing the credit it deserves. But do not take it from me. Let's check in with Tim Boyle, the president and CEO of Columbia Sportswear, get a better sense of the quarter and where his company is headed. Mr. Boyle, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. Great to talk to you. Tim, you've got some accelerating brands I want to talk to first before we get to this China issue. Uh, Sorrel, this is a remarkable brand. It's almost as if you just launched it. How did it suddenly get in a reacceleration that is pretty dramatic versus all the other brands I follow? Well, you know, it's it's really interesting, and I think actually probably it was missed in yesterday's announcement, but Sorrel's third quarter was up 27%. You know, if you remember, Sorrel's an old brand, frankly. It was uh, started in the 20s in Canada and was really a men's work brand. It caught fire a little bit in the uh, 90s when it became really the snowboarder's snowboard boot. But frankly, we've converted that. I, should, I shouldn't say we. It's really been our management team at Sorrel that's converted that brand and its entire reputation as a functional product into a women's fashion footwear brand, and it's been very, very exciting. It's really where the the, the convolution of fashion and, f- and footwear function come together, and uh, it's been very widely accepted, and it's really been a, a real key story for us this year. And again, it just proves the power of footwear. Uh, we had nice growth, and on top of uh, significant growth in historical periods, it's, it's going to be a really big brand someday. All right, let me drill down on that because when you say that it's the footwear, what you're really, I think, for our viewers saying, it's organic. It's not like you're taking out full-page ads. You're not doing these large TV commercials. It's just people see it on other people's feet and they buy it. It's amazing. You know, it's, it's, inc- it's an incredibly successful product based on its product attributes and the brand's reputation. So we're very excited about it. Big opportunity there. Now, you are... Uh, Got something very exciting that, again, I didn't think get enough talk on the conference call. And I, I may not pronounce it right, but it's uh, SH slash FT, footwear, uh, your new footwear line. Shift. And it looks like yes. that, to me, yep. that shift is something that I should be wearing, but also my kids should be wearing. Is this some sort of universal message? Because they're really pretty cool. Well, thank you. We, we really look, we're looking forward to great things from shift. You know, we, when we talk to our customers about what can the next uh, opportunity for Columbia Footwear be, we say, you know, if you took an athletic shoe and a hiking boot, put them in a box overnight, that's what you'd come up with, and that's shift. And frankly, the reception has been terrific, especially in these boutique sneakerhead uh, shops, not only in the U.S., but in Europe. Uh, it was a small launch in terms of product, but frankly, the, the uptake was quite compelling and it's going to it's going to be the genesis of a number of different products from the shift launch in that same family uh, that we're launching over the next several seasons it's it's pretty exciting stuff is shift being traded on one of these stock exchange kind of things where they trade uh, you, there's limited numbers among people like they trade nikes you know i'm not sure uh, I'll, I'll check but it would be great if it were we've had a few of those kinds of things happen. Uh, if you remember last year with our Star Wars launch, right. that product got picked up and, and was traded uh, on eBay. But uh, I, I don't know. I'll have to check on the sneaker launch. Well, we could be uh, f- uh, Frozen 2 could be like that. Yep, I agree. It's exciting merchandise. And, and you know, the, the interesting thing in terms of our relationship with Disney, uh, typically their products that are sold under license are inexpensive, 
uh, maybe T-shirts might right. be the most expensive product. And we, we have very expensive products in, in the in Disney launch, and, and it's, it's pretty exciting to see the, uh, how well that, that, that's taken up. Now, around the world, you were terrific, but I guess I have to point it out because I know it's always in the news these days. You did have a slight decline in China, and you still make things in China. Uh, obviously, China is a flashpoint. Do you think your company's being too, too colored by what is really not nearly as important as some of the things we've just talked about? No, you know, I think China is by far the largest categorical opportunity, sorry, geographic opportunity mm -hmm. for the company. We have a great business there. We've been doing business in China on the selling side for almost 20 years, and we have a great brand recognition. We, we didn't handle that part of the business properly. Mm -hmm. We have new management in there. It's been in there about six months. We're right-sizing the business and doing the right things, but the brand is very strong there. Now, when we talk about what's typically in the news today is the, is the tariff implications right. on sourcing product in China, and we've, over the last several years, been moving product out of China, not because we don't like China, but frankly because there's been better opportunities in other sources countries. Now, some things, for example, some of the Sorel product, which is highly technical, we can't move quickly out of China. So we're, we're, we're paying additional tariffs on that merchandise, which we've been very clear, it's bad for consumers globally, bad specifically for consumers in the United States. And uh, we're, we're free traders. We like the opportunity to sell more merchandise at better prices to consumers. Well, I, you offer a great bargain because of the high quality of your goods, so I understand your desire not to have governments make it even more expensive than it should be. Thank you so much to Tim Boyle, president and CEO of Columbia Sportswear Company. Stock's too cheap, guys. It's been a winner the whole way. It's going to stay a winner. We have money's back yet for the break.